And here goes yes, the sir. attack. Attack of Tadi Pogacar. We were only three guys in front. I mean, yeah, Pogacar had, uh, had McNulty. What go on, Ted? We can be all proud. Oh, what happened to Micah? Chain slipped. Without Rafa, without George, we cannot uh, try more. Two leaders, and they're the top two of the tour overall. It's never good to be isolated. I mean, if you have any problems, it can be a disaster. Let me do 15 minutes full gas. Brandon McNulty, qui roule en tête de ce trio. And that turned into the last two climbs. They don't really have the numbers anymore, but uh, they don't need it apparently because they were super strong. They can see the finish line. It rears up in front of them. I need to win. There's no other way, and uh, I give it all for for the team. Pogacar takes the win, but no time is lost by Vengegaard. We need to be ready again. I'll do my best every day. I'm glad that I was able to come around and have my best legs now. Are you still optimistic that you can win the Tour de France 2022? Yeah. The visual start of the stage at uh, 137. 137 is the 18 of the Tour de France between Lourdes and Otakam. 143.2 kilometers of racing today. The final day in the mountains. Once again, it was full gas as soon as the flag dropped, with the peloton ripping along at over 50 kilometers an hour. Lots of teams looking to put a man up front. Around 30 riders eventually got a small gap as they approached the first of three big climbs, the Col de Bisque. 25 seconds again now. Jumbo Visma managed to get Wout van Aert and Tish Benoit into the move so Vingegaard wouldn't end up isolated like yesterday. Enric Maas and Alexei Lutsenko were also up there looking to make time gains on GC with Thibaut Pino eyeing up a potential stage victory. Louis Mankees then attacked from the yellow jersey group looking to improve on his seventh place overall, while at the front, Julia Ciccone was hunting the polka dot jersey. Pino is there, Ciccone gets set. This is the elect of the King of the Mountains jersey. Julia Ciccone crests the top of the colder beast, the 75th time in history, over the top, 20 points in the pocket. the face on Wout van Aert, he knows. 7.7 .7 kilometers of effort, then get onto the descent and then be the help wherever he can. 39 kilometers to go, and the white jersey has gone long range to try and win this yellow jersey back. And there's a next attack. Pogaccia now goes, big attack from the white jersey. 36 kilometers to go. This is the next attack. Another furious attack. And he goes again. Another big attack from Pogaccia. And finally, he's got a little bit of a gap on Vengegaard. But look at Vengegaard. He's absolutely flying his way across to the wheel of Pogaccia. Répète, je répète pour l'arrière, des grands avions dans la descente. Soyez tous très prudents. Oh, oh, yellow jersey almost crashes. And this is what he was trying to do. He was trying to put the yellow jersey under pressure. Oh, is that oh, for gotcha. Overcooks. Oh, oh down. crash of the white jersey. Oh, look at that. That is a show of true sportsmanship. 
At the foot of Utacam, three men were still leading, Pino, Martinez and Van Aert, around two minutes ahead of the yellow jersey group. Vingegaard had recovered Bernot and Sepp Kuss, but how would Jumbo Visma play this? And did Pogacar have anything left up his sleeve? And an attack of Wout Van Aert. Expect the unexpected, and that's what you get. Van Aert now goes clear to try and win today's stage. Oh, the white jersey is left. Van Aert and Vengegaard have left Pogaccia. The defence of the Tour de France is about to be lost. Van Aert comes to an absolute standstill. And now on Autocam. The elect of the 109th edition of the Tour de France as a possible winner in Paris, Jonas Vengegaard is solo. Riding solo to the top of the final oars category climb of this year's Tour de France. Take a bow, the yellow jersey firmly on the shoulders of Vengegaard. He wins his second stage. Incredible. You see Wout van Aert uh, dropping Tadej Pogacar in the end. Uh, Seb Kos was incredible. Everyone was incredible. Thies, uh, Christophe and uh, Nathan. I mean, they were all incredible today. So thanks so much to my teammates. I could never have done this without them. Wout van Aert, first of all, are you proud of yourself today? <laughs> Actually, I'm, I'm uh, more proud of our performance as a team. And of course, uh, I'm super happy I, I could play a big role in it. Our hashtag is Summer Winner, which means winning together in, uh, in Dutch. And uh, I think today was again a proof of it. Vingegaard takes his second tour stage win in some style with yellow on his shoulders. One in the Alps, one in the Pyrenees. He has truly conquered the mountains. The yellow jersey is his to lose. The Dane now leads Pogacar by 3 minutes 26 seconds. Thomas is 8 minutes back with Godu up to 4th ahead of Quintana. It was a blockbuster performance from Van Aert who apart from anything else picked up 35 more green jersey points. Vingegaard also snaffled the polka dot jersey from Simon Geschke and he can't lose it as long as he makes it to Paris. One jersey should slip through Jumbo Visma's grasp. Pogaccia may not win a third straight tour, but he remains the race's best young rider. And it's still the Ineos Grenadiers leading Group Armour FDJ and Jumbo Visma in the team's classification. Three stages to go, a flat day, a time trial and a sprint on the Champs-Élysées. And on current form, you wouldn't bet against the incredible Hulk winning all three.